Welcome to Exhibition. And hello, Kate Nielsen. Hello, Richard. Thank you very much for having me. Oh, look, great to see you there. Um, and your work is on exhibition at Rochford Gallery in North Sydney. And before we look at specific works, let, let's try and, and paint a, a slightly broader picture of the context of how you've come to make the works that you do. Um, and, and first of all, how much of an influence was it to have an art teacher as your mother? Um, and, and, and how did that early life change your approach? Well, obviously having mum as an art teacher meant that we I was surrounded in art as I grew up. Um, you know, they have a lovely art collection as well as um, she was a massive help during HSC. And, you know, she was always talking about art as well as my father, he's quite creative as well. So um, it was literally all around me. And also my mother went to the National Art School as did I, and also her father went to the National Art School as well. So when I sort of expressed interest in wanting to go and you know, further pursue art. Obviously, she completely backed me, and as did my father, and and encouraged me. So it's it's literally been part of my life since I can remember. So definitely, for you, a, a broad pathway in the direction of of making art. But what about the pathway to the type of works that you do make? How have you arrived at your present approach uh, to subject matter and, and composition and style? Well, I mean, when I think back to art school, um, I've always been interested in interiors and so therefore interested in, in, in artists who have made art of interiors, like, you know, obviously the big ones like Matisse and Hockney. Um, and I, I feel like I have I just automatically always turn to either a you know interior scene or an interior scene with an outdoor scene with it and I just um, don't really ever think about drawing anything else and I haven't ever really thought about drawing anything else so and I just I fell in love with Matisse when I was really young so I think that he just I just I continually look through books of his work and stuff and I just can't believe how fresh his paintings remain even though I've seen them so many times and I think that's the thing that I find the most exciting and and that you know you can just look at these works over and over again and they're still fresh and exciting all these years later. You talk about freshness and, and excitement and, and newness, perhaps implicitly, uh, but many of the places and spaces that you portray are actually places that are familiar to you, places that have a, a sense of connection, a, a sense of history for you. Why is that sense of significance of the place important? I, I feel like every time I've made a successful drawing or painting, it's been of somewhere I really know really well. And I feel like um, it's, through that familiarity that when you it's it's not just about what you're seeing visually but it's about the way the light's coming in the feeling that you have in that place lots of my paintings are from a place down in Goulburn which is their family friends of ours and I spent a lot of my youth there and she's an artist as well so she's got an amazing collection of art on the wall she's got beautiful things that she's collected from all around the world and they've got a beautiful big mud brick house that offers views over the beautiful countryside. So it's sort of like all of that. And it's so familiar to me that I feel like I could draw it with my eyes closed. So I think that familiarity is really important when you're making art, because I don't think I could just walk into somebody's or, or you know, the thing that I find, I, I can't just have someone show me a photo of something and me make a piece of work from it, because I don't feel like there's any connection or any soul. I mean, I'm happy to do it, but I have to visit the place and feel what it's like at all different times of the day and see how the light comes in. Light's a huge thing for me. I, I really love exploring light. So I think it's really important to have a connection to, to the place that you're making a piece of work of. You mentioned that sense of, of familiarity with space and you referred to light as being something that you notice when you're in particular spaces. But what are the other elements that perhaps you uh, look for or find yourself responding to that triggers the desire to, to create a work from a space? Um, I think when I start making a work, I always start it in my head first. So if I walk in to see and I see something, I'll start constructing it in my head. And I think it starts with composition and colour. So, I mean, Matisse is such an incredible master with colour and I love 
um, how you can create different spaces and depth and things just by using color, but also about composition. I mean, uh, you probably noticed from my paintings, I really love to um, challenge the eye a little bit by making a tabletop completely upturned, but yet still having a sense of perspective going outside. So I guess what I do when I walk in and I see something, I'll start constructing in my head with the composition and the colors and, and, and then see what kind of view. I mean, sometimes I mix it up. Sometimes I might do a, a different view to what's actually out the window because the painting calls for that, um, you know, that change, that artistic license. Um, but yeah, definitely I'm about composition oh, and also patterns. If I walk into a room and I can see lots of different patterns, particularly if they're clashing, and you know, that obviously immediately starts making me think about how I can construct a painting with all of that. Let's talk about some of that approach to, to patterns and perhaps let's start referring to one or two specific works. Um, for example, uh, limes, avocados and lemons. Uh, as we look there, we've got a, you know, a dramatically patterned tablecloth and we've got some very dramatically patterned uh, wallpaper or wall painting. Um, yes. how, do you, how do you either come to find or perhaps do you create for the works these patterns that you see? Well, that particular painting is of a very good friend of mine uh, who lives in Balmain and she is a frequent visitor of the Roselle Markets and she collects the most wonderful things. And I've had a lot of summer's evenings there where I've been, um, you know, sitting with her, drinking rosé, eating olives and having a wonderful time and having a chat. So again, it's all about that familiar feeling and I just feel such a warmth when I'm in her house, hence why that painting is full of warm colours and patterns. That tablecloth is her tablecloth that I think she got from somewhere in France, I think. Um, and she always has, you know, you know, big bowls of avocados and things out. That background wall, she doesn't have that wallpaper. <laughs> Otherwise her house would be even more crazy. Than <laughs> but <laughs> Nobody um, has that wallpaper. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, but again, when you look at Matisse and he has a whole, I mean, the floor and the wall are all covered in a huge, crazy, big open pattern. And that's what I really enjoy. I mean, that painting took a long time to arrive at that point. It was many different types of paintings before it came to be what it is now um, and I think it's that absolute I mean that pattern is somewhere else in her house I think it's on her cushions or something like that so it's all still come from that environment but what I do is I I just keep pushing and pulling the painting seeing how far I can push the pattern and see um, you know sometimes it's a disaster and I have to paint over a whole section to get rid of <laughs> and then sometimes I'll do that and I think, oh, that's starting to work and then I'll add another pattern. I just keep pushing and pulling and pushing and pulling until I arrive at something which I think works. But it's all come from the same environment. When you talk about uh, pushing and, and, and pulling the, uh, the patterns in a painting, let's go to another specific one, um, orange, ginger lily and fruit. Uh, you've chosen such a variety of, of pattern surfaces and, and pattern motifs in this. How do you manage to keep so many elements under control compositionally? Because you were saying that the composition is so important to you uh, when we were talking earlier. Well, I, I don't know if I do keep them under control. I think sometimes it gets totally out of control. And, that, and that's when, um, you know, when, when you start pulling it back. So that was, again, that was about a million different paintings before it, 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 it is what it is now. But that layering of ideas and things that don't work, I think is what makes a painting so rich. And in the end, I made the whole sort of corner of it very dark because I felt like it needed some depth behind. And, and then I... Um, I just keep pushing and pulling and the brickwork, obviously, again, the perspective's completely changed on that. It looks like it's sort of standing up like this, but I think that that makes the painting more interesting and it still works as a space that you can read. Um, and that ginger lily is just magnificent. It grows in my garden and, oh my gosh, they're huge <laughs> and I love them. So that's where that painting started with that lily. So how important is any maintenance of reality um, because in that particular work, as you say, you know, the floor, the brick floor appears to sit right up. Uh, the wall appears perhaps to continue down into the floor surface on the other side of the table. So it looks like yeah. the floor has changed from one side of the table to the other, all of those sort of yeah. things. Um, do, does, does that 
reality in inverted commas, does that rate particularly importantly in your considerations? I think it's a fine line. I think sometimes it absolutely doesn't work. And that's when you have to reconsider things. I think for me, it's when you're looking at a work. So like the bowls of fruits and things, people will read as a bowl of fruit. But when I do a bowl of fruit on top of a tablecloth that's got fruit on it, it I really love that play between the, you know, the, the real and then the, the flat surface. Um, and I don't mind that as long as when you're looking at the painting as the viewer that you aren't feeling uncomfortable about it. Sometimes when I've got, you know, and I can see it myself when I've got the perspective's gone a little bit too far or I've, I've upturned something too much so you can't quite sort of understand it, you can't quite read it. I think it needs to be resolved where, however that you do that, it just needs to feel like a resolved piece. And that's when I know I've finished a painting actually, when I look at it and I feel like, Yes, I feel comfortable looking at that. I can read it. There's a table. Sure, it's upturned and it looks like everything should fall off, but I know it's a table. I know that's a floor. I deliberately put those um, chairs on that side to indicate that there was a difference between the, the wall and the floor. Um, so little things like that that you add in, just a hint of it, just so your eye knows what's going on, basically. When they appear, the elements of the outdoors uh, which we can sometimes see through through windows, um, appear relatively naturalistic. Uh, they do have yeah. that kind of credible structure. Is there a deliberate sense of tension for you between the view of the outdoor and the immersion in the interior? Most definitely. And I love that play. And I love making the window so large it takes up almost all of the canvas. And that, you know, I, I still feel like, even though I play a lot with perspective, I still feel like your eye needs to be able to go out the window and have a little bit of space. So that's why I generally keep the outdoors fairly, you know, realistic or so you can see that it is, you know, just trees and things. Also, I do a lot of um, adding in the outdoors from my studio and I, I have my studio above in the top room of the house and it overlooks. Anyway, so I often just put, put what I can see out my studio as the outdoors but I just think it's important to have that that visual sort of rest so you can you can go out and it's not all sort of cramped up in your face. How with these various elements uh, of of reality of perspective of pattern of compositional structure when a viewer is is looking at these how, how are you hoping perhaps that they may respond and, and what maybe do you hope that they might be thinking? Well, um, that's a very interesting question. I like that question because I don't know if I've ever really thought about it like that. But what I do find that people say to me is that they think my paintings feel joyous and happy. There's nothing heavy about my paintings. So I guess without me even realising, I have, I, I would like my paintings to make people feel light and happy. Most of them I choose to paint because they're very joyful they're joyful for me and I hope that that joy comes out in in my paintings as well so it's kind of funny too because I feel like you know it's such a personal experience so I sort of feel like a personal experience for me is on the wall but you know only those people who know that person know the space they'll respond differently because they have a personal connection to it but I hope that everybody can um, find joy in it in some way. We've spoken largely about painting, but how important is the foundation of drawing to your practice? Well, I think, look, lucky me, I went to the National Art School with such an amazing group of teachers. I mean, I had Adam Cullen, I had Ewan McLeod, Wendy Sharp, um, Bill Brown, David Suzer, and all of them put such emphasis on drawing. And I still, completely agree. I, I, whenever I'm thinking about a painting, I draw always draw it out. I'm constantly drawing things. Um, drawing is so important. It's like doing your scales when you're a musician. I'm sure every artist, well, I shouldn't say that, but I, I, you know, it's such an important part of art practice to keep up drawing in order for you to be able to, I mean, that's how I play with composition. I try things, you know, trial and error, even though I still do that in paint. And also I got told at art school that I, I sort of draw with paint, which is an interesting comment, I thought, which has stuck with me all these years. Um, so it's very important and I, it's fundamental to everything, really. Many of these works are large works, 
uh, some, in fact, very large works. How mm -hmm. important is scale to the works you make? Do you know, it's funny, at, at, when I was at art school, my poor father, I'd say to him the night before, Dad, I need a two metre by two metre board to draw on for, <laughs> for school tomorrow. And he'd say, oh, OK. Um, so I have always enjoyed working big. I don't quite know why. I mean, sometimes some of those canvases are so big, I feel like I'm actually working on a wall. <laughs> but I, I find such joy in starting a huge canvas. There's something really um, free and and I just enjoy those first few strokes and I love mapping out the big composition and stuff where I fall into trouble is finishing them <laughs> because <laughs> freshness, freshness is such a, an important part of how I like to work and the immediacy of brush stroke and it can really go the other way so quickly and something can look overworked so fast. And I just feel like when I've got a huge space to work on, it just feels like that freshness is easier, is more easily um, maintained. So I'm not quite sure why, but I just, I really enjoy working big. Although some of them are a little bit too big. <laughs> they take a long time. <laughs> well, Kate Nielsen, thank you for taking the time to share your enthusiasm for the creation of these works. And thank you for sharing your exhibition with us. Oh, thank you very much for having me, Richard. Thank you very much.